I'm here. Hello. Hey guys, I'm just gonna go make some tea real quick. I could go for a lot of tea, but I'm only gonna make a little bit. And then I obviously am cooking pizza, as you guys may have inferred from that conversation we had a couple minutes ago about the pizza. But either way, let me just get some tea on the pot, and then, and then we'll have some fun. So, one second, and I can hear you. Well, you, you can hear me. I can't hear you, but you can hear me. I wonder if it's okay to reuse coffee filters. This is only the first time I'm reusing this specific coffee filter, but I think it's fine. As far as I know, there's nothing... I mean, it doesn't hurt the coffee filter. I hope not. Alright, let's move this out yonder. That's what I figured. I'm not putting coffee in it, I'm just using it as a... Well, I'm using it as a filter. I do use them multiple times, so that's good. Oh wait, I actually don't need my tablet quite yet because we're um, we're using a very powerful engineering tool that you guys may have heard of, known as Excel. It's an aerospace engineer's friend. Good day, everybody. Um, I'm I'm working with a slightly different camera crop, I guess, camera field of view, but it's not really a field view; it's a crop. Um, you used to be able to see a lot lower down, like all the way to my core, but now you can only see my, my, my luscious pecs and my shoulders. And the reason I did that is so my beautiful face could be a little bit closer to your beautiful face. I realized that my face was not close enough, and well, I just didn't like how far away we were from each other. So I wanted to make it a little bit clearer that, hey, I want my face to be close to yours. Don't do that. I'll just make my face larger. It's really not a cycle you want to get into. It's not healthy. Not healthy at all. So, Kelly, you can try to back away, but I will keep making advances. I don't give up that easily. Sorry. But really not. Not sorry at all. All right, what are we gonna do today? Um, we're gonna do something pretty cool. We're gonna take a look at the solar system. <laughs> Who doesn't want more Nelly? You always need more Nelly. Uh-oh, what's wrong with my thing? Um, excuse me. Oh, there it is. I don't know what happened there. Got a launch coming up in two days. So sorry about the whole telescope thing. I'll tell you what though, I set everything up on my laptop so I'm ready to go at a whim's notice. If the sky clears up for like an hour tonight, which I'll keep checking if it does, welcome aboard, monstrous. Glad to have you. If the sky clears up tonight, then I will definitely go out and do the telescope stream as I plan to do. But as of now, it's probably not going to happen. I'll keep my eye out on it, though. I'm actually just... Just give me a second. I'm going to go check now. I'm going to see if it's um, at least starting to clear up. Which I don't think it is. So don't get your hopes up. I'm not trying to lead you on. So, yeah, probably not tonight, guys. Sorry. Unfortunately, not tonight. Uh, okay. 
So I can actually move this closer to me now that I actually need it. <laughs> Man, it's like that that is what's inefficient with um these these government designs. Just the or <laughs> the orange code happened to make it into this scene too. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> this is guys, this is referencing a video that we were watching earlier today. A very funny video. Just gonna keep making my face a little bit larger for you guys. <laughs> By the end of the stream, it's just gonna be my face. That's too funny, just the orange cone just keeps moving. Just a little bit though, not too far. And then they decided to bring the orange cone in here. <laughs> That's too funny. I like that a lot. How to get to Mars! Very cool! HD! <laughs> Did you guys see the name of that? <laughs> I'm not gonna watch it, but... What a joke! <laughs> How to get to Mars! Very cool! HD! <laughs> Very cool! That's funny, right? It, it could just be me. It could just be me, but I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Very cool! HD! I'm done. Sorry. Let me open up my dashboard so I can monitor you freaks. You're not freaks. You're, you're very nice people. I, I enjoy talking to you a lot, and that's why I do this. Okay. Let's throw the quality down on here. So let's get to work. Um, we're gonna be doing um, some pretty cool things today. This PC, desktop, Poconos and finances. That's my life, Poconos and finances. Um, we're gonna name this. And we're gonna make this Excel document look slick. Okay. I'm not gonna co color anything in quite yet. Um, solar system synodic periods. We are equipped with very powerful knowledge that we discussed, was it last night or two nights ago? And we're gonna use that knowledge. Oh, that's tea time, so give me a second. Uh, I, I, I allowed you, well, I, hmm, what's a good way of putting this? Um, you guys allowed me to kind of backtrack a little bit into previous Arrow 101 material when we did the synodic period thing, which was awesome. Thank you for the patience. Uh, but now we're actually going to use it for our solar system a little bit more comprehensively than we did last time. It's going to be really, really cool. So, but tea, tea first. And pizza, pizza too. So anyway, uh, we're going to, well, well, I'll show you. Uh, 
we we did a few examples yesterday for synodic periods as to um when two planets will successfully realign with each other after they've realigned once already in the past. That's what a synodic period is. And I know my music is too loud, so. But that, so that's what a synodic period is. And uh, a few people threw out a few pretty cool examples just to, to show you how to do the calculations. But um, we're, we're gonna make an entire table and we're gonna do that for every single configuration of every single planet in the solar system. It's gonna be pretty cool. So again, the equation that we can use is uh, the following. Let's open up Word. Can I actually insert equations here? Oh, I can. Okay, so, so let's merge. Well, let's set this up first. So my very eager Mother just served us nine pizzas. Okay. And we need to do it one more time on the other side. Uh, it, well, obviously it's around because I was able to pull it out of the NASA's database, so it's it's around somewhere. You just gotta find it. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other axis now. But first of all, so this is gonna be a uh, planet, a uh, semi-major axis in AU. Okay, and the same thing over here, planet. Uh, semi-major axis in AU. Uh, let's do this one more time. My, say it with me, very eager mother just served us nine pickles, pizzas, <laughs> whatever, doesn't matter. This week in Tuan. <laughs> Hello again, Mihai. Me high, you high too. God, I want some of that pizza. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm gonna let my tea cool down and drink a cup of tea first. I'll get there, I'll get there eventually. I've got a lot of things I'm trying to jiggle around. Jiggle around, really? No. Pluto is a planet now? Why not, we'll throw Pluto in the mix. We're gonna throw Pluto in the mi yeah. You know what? Because you guys just said, oh well, technically, Jason, uh, it's not a planet. Uh, te uh, technically, uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'll I'll put these in here. Okay. Now, are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy? Well, technically, Jason. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's it's really not. It's really not a planet anymore. Thank you. You feel you feel good about yourselves now. Huh? <sighs> okay. Yes. Beautiful, Mihai. Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> Tell us more. No. No, I'm not going to. Curve it out. What's up? What's up, dude? Good sir. We're making a solar system calculator. Planetary synodic period calculator. Wow, that sounds so much cooler what I ha than what I have up there. Planetary uh, synodic calculator. All right, that is awesome. I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> That's too neat. So we're gonna go ahead and make all these black because the synodic period, um, from one planet to the same planet is technically infinity. It takes infinite amount of time for one planet to traverse itself to get back to itself. So we're not gonna worry about that right now. Okay, uh, we're gonna merge all these. And yes, I am gonna spend a little bit of time making sure it looks nice, okay? All right, that's set up how I want it to be set up. 
Now let's go into Gante. Welcome aboard. Yep, this is also off centered. There we go. Dun dun dun. Oh man, we've already finished the entire um the entire Apollo 11 album. I mean, it's a really short album, so I would understand that, but still. It's unfortunate. Well, they're they're again, a, uh, Adam Young has some awesome music, so it, it doesn't matter in the end. Oh, that's no good, Kerbinot. That's no good at all. That's no good at all. Man. Space heist! We haven't done a space heist in a while, guys. Let's do a space heist. Alright, we're gonna whip up this really handy dandy. Um... Here, I'll show you. This is the go-to document for me when you're looking about anything related to planets uh, this is the one that I use right there um, it's basically got everything you'd want to know about um, properties of the planets to a relatively smaller extent wow you guys are just risking the biscuit you're not even well I guess you already have the biscuit so you are you're risking the biscuit so let's take a look at our semi major axes okay um, semi-major axes of Mercury. Semi-major axis of Mercury. And we're doing everything in astronomical units, or AUs. So, um, the AU value of the semi-major axis of Mercury is 0 0.387, 0 0.387, um, 0 0.98. For Venus, it's 0 0.723, 723329. Uh, for Earth, it's 1.000001. 000 uh, for Mars, it's 1.523679. Alright, moving out to our gaseous planets. Uh, we've got Jupiter, 5.202603. Saturn, 9.554909. Yeah, Psy, probably, man. I don't know. I. You don't need the coins. I, uh, I don't know. I know I know. I shouldn't base it. I shouldn't base what I'm doing on other streamers, and I understand that entirely. Um, but... Any any huge streamer that that I appreciate and that I enjoy their content does not do things like that. And the, the big streamers that do do things like that are the people that have like an average viewer demographic of age eleven, and their all of their content is just really immature. And I don't know. I'm so, the one person that does have um. I, yeah, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna stop talking. You understand? I want this to be an educational stream uh, where we talk about ideas and concepts and nerd about space stuff. I don't. You, I'm gonna stop talking. You understand exactly what I'm coming from. I, I don't care about the Twitch aspect of it. Well, I do care about the Twitch aspect of it, but in the end, I am trying to do this for education. But this is just like really difficult. I'm just trying to break up really smoothly with Super Space Bot right now, and it's not going too well. So. I really should just rip the band-aid off. Super Space Bot, you are non-existent in January. I'm, I'm cutting you off. Uh, so, Neptune has a semi-major axis of 30.110386 astronomical units, and then Pluto, 39.544674 astronomical units. I am saying that. Well, everybody except for Psy. Psy is pretty immature. Okay. Serpent. Thank you for the auto host. Good sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we've got all of our planets set up properly now. Um, so let's go ahead. I made the cut. <laughs> you did it. Good job. Good job. Are these... Um... No, they're not. Never mind.
Okay. So we've got um, this setup and this setup. I'm going to make sure that again, these are all taken out to the same amount of significant figures. Five, two, three, six, eight, nine. Well, you know, I'm not gonna do that because I want it to be legible. I want it to be readable. And if I do that, then it would make it a little bit more difficult to, to read, unfortunately. Actually, I'm not gonna worry about spacing quite yet. Okay, moving on. So let's go like this. Um, um, is this how I wanted to do it? Yeah, this is how I wanted to do it. Okay, so anyway, sorry, I was, I was thinking about something. So, we know the equation. We already know the equation. What did I mess up here? No, that's correct. Never mind. <laughs> oh no! Oh man. Hold on, you know what, I think I know the reason for that. I think I'm accidentally requiring a minimum. Dual heist. No, never mind. You guys just, you guys are just out of luck. <laughs> All right, so um, we've got these set up. Now we know the equation, so we've got uh, Microsoft Word open. So let's take a look at the equation. Uh, we derived this uh, yesterday and we know the equation is as follows. Uh, one over S is equal to one over the quantity of one over P1 minus one over P2. Um, okay. Uh, where, uh, I'm gonna throw that in the equation actually. Um, where, <laughs> Don't throw the rocket. Uh, where P1, the period of the first object, is less than P2. And S is equal to synodic period of planets. Okay. Well, I actually don't necessarily need that. Because I'll have um, a definition down here. Oh, sorry. So let me make a quick little table. Thanks, Super Space Bot. Sorry, guys. Well, I'm not sorry. It's Super Space Bot's fault. It's not my fault. So, um, let's make a table. There you go. Have some candy. Um, and we know um, that P1 is the period, orbital period, of inner planet. We know that um, P2, um, orbital period of outer planet. And then we know that um, S is equal to the synodic period of, uh, well, P1 and P2. Well, it's inner and outer planets. I like it. Now, let's go ahead and center this sucker. Oh, come on. Center, uh, layout, uh, width. Well, I, I'm fine with, dang it. Why are you spending so much time making it look good? Can't you just do what you were telling us that you would do? Well, just give me a second. I'll get to it. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that this is set up so I can um, I can place it inside the uh, the calculator document. I think I'm allowed to do that. Or yeah, well we'll see. We'll see. 
And I can put equations in Excel documents. I don't know if I can uh, put tables inside of tables. So let's find out. So let's make this a little bit larger and let's go ahead and merge all these together. Where's the merge button? Ah. Yeah, can't do it. That's okay. So let's go like this. Like that. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's why. Okay, it just... Okay, got it. Sorry. Oh, it posts as a picture? Oh, that is horrible. No, but I didn't want a picture. I wanted an actual... Um... Here. Excel thinks it can outsmart me, but... Insert equation. Aha! Take that. And now we can go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Wahaha. Take that, Excel. Can't fool me. Okay, we've gotten our equation in here. Let's go ahead and make this, uh, well, contain some sort of color for the background. So it's a little bit easier to read. Nah, I don't like that color. Let's do um, a bluish color. Ooh, let's do Penn State colors. Ah. Cool. All right. No, that just looks like crap, but I'm gonna leave it as is. All right, so we've got this equation that we can use. Um, now, the other variation of this equation is as follows. Uh, you can also go like this. Oh, space raid. Space raid. I'm in. You can also go like this. Um, A1 to the power of 1.5. No. 1.5 um, minus 1 over A2 to the power of uh, what what do you guys do you guys know what this song reminds me of? Um, do you guys watch Westworld? Have you, are you guys familiar with Westworld by any chance? Space raid. I have no clue what I'm doing. Uh, well, read it. Read it. Um, Carbonaut charges his warp drive to target an abandoned galactic trade vessel near Alpha Centauri. Type space raid to warp there and battle for the loot. So that's what you're doing, okay? You know what this song reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, Dolores' theme song. I'll play it. Her theme song is called Beautiful World or something. Here, let me find it real quick. Oh, this world. I'm just gonna add it to the queue. And I'm gonna skip the song, actually. Exactly the same, right? Just, yeah, just about, Kelly, right? That's what it seems like. Tell me those two songs weren't incredibly similar. And I, I'm getting flashbacks because this is my, um... This is my good morning ringtone. I wake up to this, which is kind of cool because the whole point of the show is that the AIs are waking up, like they're becoming conscious. Speaking of the devil, um, if you guys don't know who uh, Serpent AI was, he was the one that we uh, we so graciously received that auto host earlier. Um, he's working on AI, so he's working on making Westworld become a reality, and he's one of the Twitch ED streamers, so. Yeah. But I love it because this was this was my song for waking up and it's like the AIs are waking up. Okay, that's it. Song's over. You had your fun.
Theory confirmed. Nah, it's still just a theory. It's not real yet. Um, so, guys, we've got these two equations right here. These two very useful equations. Um, obviously, we're going to be wanting to use um, this one right here. So, let me take this. And let me take this. So I can zoom in even further. Oh, Serpent, you are here. What's up, man? Web tech? Yeah, Serpent's doing some crazy extension work. I've got an extension on my own. I'm not gonna brag, but I think my extension is pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> Someone stop that guy! No, I'm... I'm... <laughs> I must educate! Um, I must say, um... My extension is pretty cool. I must say, and I'm being... I'm being modest, okay? I'm being modest. Let me show it to you guys. <laughs> it's way less complex than anything... I don't even have a back end on this. I'm... I'm coping... I'm taking someone else's back end and I'm using it. <laughs> but this is my, um... Is about to go horribly wrong. Yeah. Hey, Inertia, what's up? Uh, Inertia is another one of these fantastic Twitch EDU streamers that's part of the team. Did you figure out um, it out when hosted? That oh yeah, Serpent. You know what the problem was? Um, yeah, yeah. I'll show you what the problem was, man. It, it's really straightforward. I don't even know if I still have it. Um, I do. Oh, I was slapping, I was slapping my thigh because I was concentrating. That's all I was doing. You're so, you're weird, Sai. You're weird. <laughs> Inappropriate. I'm gonna smack you. No, Kelly. No, no, Serpent, it wasn't. Well, I don't know if, if that's what the problem is or not. Anyway, guys, yeah, Serpent and Inertia are both uh, Twitch EDU people, and they're awesome people, so... Uh, what the problem was is I've so I've got um, I'll just open up live and I'll show you so I've got um, y You have to call this script at the beginning of your HTML doc and then you call style Well, you can call style. So I have uh, CSS in my HTML code uh, And then I've got my body uh, Which I just have a div that I use in launch schedule and then my problem was right here serpent uh, now I'm calling just jQuery dash 3.2.1.js because I downloaded jQuery and I stored it in this folder. If you try to access jQuery um, using something like this, so what I was doing before is I had like the code.jQuery.com slash yada 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 to get it from online. I think it's called a CDN, Content Developer Network. I think that's what it was called. Um, but you're not allowed to do that, apparently, with um, with jQuery. Yeah, Serpent, I didn't know that, man. So I have to download every single thing and every single plugin that I wanted to link to it. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, I understand why they do it security-wise, uh, but I was just, I was kind of surprised. I'm like, really, I have to do that? But anyway, I did it, and it's working totally fine now. So, yeah, guys. I mean, if you if you ever want to know about upcoming real-life rocket launches, and you don't know where to find them, then, um, well, you can find them right below. You can find them, like, right over, uh, there. <laughs> you, you can find them right over there. See? That's me, po that's me pointing to it. <laughs> right over there. It's right over here. So, if you, if you guys need any of that. I didn't scroll to your panels. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Novus, good sir. What's up? How are you? Inertia, thank you for the host. Much appreciated, my friend. Uh, yeah, guys. Ugh. They're like really awesome people that do a lot of awesome things on Twitch, and it's kind of our jobs to be the 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 forefront of this to make sure that you guys know that you don't have to waste your time watching mind-numbing video games. I'm not saying video games are wrong, like, play video games, of course, but there's also other really cool things that Twitch is doing right now that you should be aware of, so. Just saying.
I'm actually taking an anthropology course next semester. Fun fact, I'm taking uh, Anthropology 1. That's the class that I'm taking. And yes, I have to go back for another semester because the program I'm in with NASA is very strange and it requires me to do more work than I should have. It's weird. But I have to go back for one more semester and I'm taking Anthropology 1 and I am so excited for it. Uh, okay, so let's open up our documents one more time. And sorry, some of these songs are rather slow. Uh, so this this album right here that we're listening to right now is um, oh, is non-existent. The Spirit of St. Louis. So this album is based on all of the events of uh, the the St. Louis flight. The Spirit of St. Louis. Wait, what what flight am I thinking about? There's definitely a better way to say that. I just didn't say it. So. Oh well. <sighs> King Crab, I'm excited, man. It's yeah, Nersha, it's gonna be awesome. So I'll be able to um I'll be able to come on, I'll put my glasses on, I'll be like, oh yeah, so I I understand anthropology. But I, I'm obviously not gonna understand anything to extent of like uh, <laughs> well I I'll be able to like <laughs> I'll be able to at least hang up with the lingo, hopefully. That's the goal, that's the goal of the class, to learn the lingo of anthropology. Because all this stuff, man, all, all scientific fields are, I mean, eh, all, all scientific fields, they're all different ways of thinking, okay? Uh, it's, uh, uh, but it's, it's all like lingo, right? If you understand the general vocabulary of what you're working on, then you're fine. Like, that's how I can go into Serpent, like, I'm not an aerospace engineer. I, I am an aerospace engineer. <laughs> I'm not a programmer. Um, inherently, I'm not a programmer, but I've I've seen enough of like programming lingo. I'm not the best at it, that so that I can like follow along with this stuff. So really, I mean, if you just go into like Serpent Stream and if you just pay attention to the lingo, then you like it doesn't matter if you have no idea what the heck he's doing. If you pay attention to the lingo, then that would definitely help. Okay. Yes, inertia. And that's right, forensic anthropology. That's wild. You found your lost notebook. Nice, man. Chuck Lindbergh. There you go. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for putting out that Discord EDU link. Thank you. I, I need to update that. So, I, I don't know if we've officially decided if we're doing it with the dot in between Twitch and EDU. Or, and apparently now we can't even use Twitch EDU. So, I, I was like firing off a few examples that we could use maybe in the Discord. But I don't, I don't really know. Yeah, <laughs> I need to, I need to be able to keep up with the, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. We can't use Twitch. We can't use Twitch in the name. So come up with something better. Uh, let me go get more tea um, and wash out my cup because it looks like mold is, not, it's not mold. I know it's not mold, but it's something I like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not Twitch. <laughs> we should just purposely misspell Twitch, like, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> or throw a C in there or something. I don't know. You think it's gonna end up changing? Yeah, I, f I figured, so. I, th I threw out some maybes, but... Oh, Horizon! Hello! Good sir. And Horizon's another one of these twitchy to you folks that I so boldly talk about all the time because you guys are ridiculously awesome. Uh, Horizon, we were... We like, I'm sure you saw in the Discord, we were brainstorming ideas for new names, and uh, we were talking about how the fact that we can't use Twitch, apparently, in the team name, and it was, I don't know. I'm gonna go get more tea. One second.
I like it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Horizon, I, I completely understand it. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to come... Uh, I didn't mean to sound like I was disagreeing with Twitch. Um, disagreeing with us. I'm totally... I totally understand why they wouldn't want the Twitch name. I like fidgety to you. And I understand, yeah, exactly, sir, but I understand that teams are a little bit more official. That's, I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Inertia. And, de sorry, definitely Horizon Sai. I saw your name, but then I saw Horizon Sai's post. I'm like, wait, what? Anyway. Talking about stream team name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because apparently there's a few, there's a few partners on, um, yeah, bite me. Uh, there's a few partners that are also part of, um, uh, Twitch EDU, and they have the ability to make teams. So. Anyway. Uh, let's make this calculator. Glitch EDU. Is it really? Okay. Actually, I think we were talking about that, baby. Alright, so I've, I made a mistake somewhere, obviously. This isn't lining up exactly how I wanted it to. Oh, because I don't need to do this. I can actually just go like this. And yes, I, I do care about semantics here. I, semantics? I, I, I want the document to look good before I officially submit, you know. Because I'm going to be providing this uh, to you guys on the Google Drive. I want to make sure it looks good. So that's what I wanted. Right? Yeah. And then SMA AU. Yeah. Okay. And then bold this. Oh, now I'm just, I'm screwing it all up. <laughs> totally not to achieve you. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah. A team formerly known as Twitch EDU. <laughs> oh man. That's too funny. I'm not procrastinating. I do want to do this. I'm just drinking tea. All right, so as I mentioned, technically, if you've got one planet in a specific semi-major axis, well, if you've got an orbiting body with a specific semi-major axis for its orbit, and if you're assuming circular, and if you have another planet that has the same exact semi-major axis and is also circular, then technically the synodic period in between those two planets is infinity, and the reason for that is this. The equation for synodic period is as follows. Um, well, actually... It would be zero, technically, I think. Where's my pizza? Pizza's coming, don't worry. No, 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 you're not derailing. It, I, I, I'm totally fine with having conversations on the stream too. That's, I'm not streaming a specific big game, I'm streaming IRL, so it's, it's fine. Super Brain Blast, I like it. So anyway, we've got this equation. If you have two orbiting bodies with the same semi-major axis, then this will be zero. This will be infinity. And synodic period is undefined. So, if, if you've got another planet orbiting around the sun at the same exact orbit as Earth... Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Why don't, Just tell me, guys. Tell me. <laughs> I mean, you did tell me, so I can't complain. So... I like streamy to you. Yeah, I like that inertia. I like that a lot. Cause that that's cool because then it doesn't just limit us to Twitch. Right? Alright, so let's let's uh, apply some of this knowledge. And we're gonna do it like this. So 
for example, if we want to determine the synodic period in between um, the planets Venus and Mercury, then we do it right here, okay? And the look, so we'll do it like this, I'll show you. So again, um, we're gonna do it for the Mercury column. And remember, A1 is always less than A2. That's very important. Nice, Kelly. But that could be a problem because of... Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, these are all awesome ideas, by the way, guys. This is like... <laughs> It's so way better than I was what I was throwing in the Discord. I was just throwing in like, I was throwing in generic educational terms and just patching them together with some Walmart two dollar glue, and it wasn't working too well. Things were falling apart very quickly. So again, uh, the whole thing is that A one is less than A two. So for this entire column, we can do it with Mercury. Um, and we're going to start with Mercury, and we can hit all of these planets because everything past Mercury will have a larger semi-major axis in the solar system. So we're gonna go like this. Um, equals, and then, um, one divided by, well, this isn't right, sorry, this equation is wrong. I made a mistake, it's actually just S. Wait, what? It's actually just S. This this is the equation for the synodic period. I've already taken, this is sort of a double inverse. I've already done a double inverse. I've already, I've performed the double inverse to get rid of the inverse on the right hand, the left hand side. All right. Boom. You got a glitter obsession, Kelly? That's cool, man. I like glitter, glitter's awesome. So now we can go like this. It's equal to one divided by, um, one divided by boom to the power of 1.5 minus one divided by um boom ah crap to 1.5 I don't think I need that set of parentheses but that's fine so that is the equation um. Ah, oh, and we can't take it. Oh, and I guess we can't like take it over or anything. That stinks. Cool school. I like it. Kermanot, what about you, man? Kermanot, I want to see some streams from you. We need some more history, folk. All right, so the cool thing is that we can just drag this down. <laughs> no, we can't, <laughs> and I'll show you why. It's because of this right here. Uh, this, the C8 is constant. Like that. Now here's a really interesting behavior. Um, as you can kind of see, and after this, we're gonna do a ton of data analysis on it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. As you can see, there are slight variations, but once you get down to it, um, when you're comparing Mercury and um, Pluto, the synodic period is almost the same as Mercury and Neptune. Can any of you guys describe why that is? Um, and you have just as much time as uh, you, you have just as much time until I open this document up and I, I write it out myself, okay? So here's, here's what's happening right there. The fact that if you have two very close planets, um, there are gonna be somewhat large differences. But if you've got two far away, me, 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 pick me, Horizon. Uh, we, don't, we don't do hand raises in this class. Just shout it out at the top of your lungs. Shout it out, man. Twitch, you. <laughs> So the thing is, if, you, if you've if you got a center star, 
which looks like that. That's a really small star. That's correct! Horizon, you win 100 coins. Or points. 100 of something. You win 100 of your choosing. Oh, come on. Alright, what's going on here? Oh my god, he's right! Yes, he is. Nailed it, Horizon Sai. Thank you. Okay, that's what I want. <laughs> Don't smack him, he's fine. You got it right! Oh, come on. This... Everything just went amok as soon as I got this new keyboard. Oh, actually, something went amok with uh, One Note in general. Okay. <sighs> should I... Should I go down to this level? Should I? I am. I'm gonna go down to this level. So here's the whole concept. Oh, Miha, you, you got it right, too. You guys, I mean, you, you two have the same exact answer. Believe it or not, those, those two answers are exactly the same. Yep, exactly. Um, that's exactly what it does, Horizon Sai. He knows it. He knows it. All right, thank you for being horrible, Paint.net. So the whole concept is if you've got a star... And then if you've got your first planet right here, and it's orbiting, uh, and if you've got a really close planet, then that close planet might move like this, mu this much, right? So the difference in between these two planets uh, is, is slight, but the second planet is moving close to the first one, okay? Yeah, right? I, I hate this. It, one node isn't working for some reason. But here's the thing. If you've got a planet way out here with a long period, well, guess what? The difference is only very, very small, right? So basically, this inner planet can rotate all the way around the sun with this, without, without this outer planet moving at all, right? So that's the, that's the whole idea, okay? Same, yeah, you got it, Mihai, same thing. So anyway, that's um, like an old nun. That's fine, that's fine, Sai. That's fine and dandy with me. So that's the whole concept. Don't save. So the closer you get to the outer period, the close good night let's say that we've got planet uh, Vulcan 2 um, and if anybody can tell me who discovered the original Vulcan planet I'd be impressed well not discovered it but thought there was one horizon wait for other people to answer okay Still draws better with paint and mouse than me with the one. My dude, I the thing is, Serpent, with my Wacom tablet, I did so I did a series called Arrow 101 where all I did was for like an entire three or four weeks just wrote on the tablet and I just got used to it. <laughs> pick me, pick me! Alright, Horizon, who was it? Who was it, man? Captain Kirk. Nope, wrong. Smack. Have some wine? Nah, man. No wine tonight. Tomorrow, I've got my out-briefing presentation with um, with the Flight Dynamics team. Uh, which basically, uh, I, I, I had to compile all of my work for... Um... Oh, I don't even know who has inside. <laughs> Let's look it up together. I, I don't even know who it was. It was more of just like me asking. Um, Vulcan. Planet Vulcan. I'm gonna get a ton of... Ah, oh, there we go. Nope, that's Star Trek. Oh, wait, is it? No, this is correct. Um, the brown nose. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. But I'll, I'll admit, um, I, <laughs> I know. Uh, I'll, we, Horizon Sai and I both admitted that we don't know the answer, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, Argument for existence. Up, oh, you got it, Leverrier. Wait, I thought Leverrier did work with um. Didn't Leverrier do work with Pluto as well, or Neptune, or something? Right, he did um. He, he was the one that did the calculations for determining that Neptune would be there without even seeing Neptune. Yeah. Yeah, Novus. So it's it's a big it's a big um, 
Yeah, just meditate, man. <laughs> oh, meditating is awesome. I wish I was better at meditating. I'm not gonna lie, it's really easy to tell when you're not good at meditating and I'm not good at meditating. If I were to try to sit down and meditate, I and I get it, I just need to practice more. I've been trying to do it recently where I just sit down and, cause I mean, I'm constantly every day just bombarded with social media and just uh, like computers and programming. I'm like, I need to find a way to clear my mind every once in a while. So I've been trying to work on it. Um, <laughs> nice horizon. Um, so I've been trying to work on it, um, and it's difficult. It's really difficult to sit down and clear your mind entirely without thinking about other things. It's it's difficult. Anyway, if we add Planet Vulcan two, that has a semi major axis of um, yeah, it is. I know Inertia. Two, I I I get it. <laughs> I'm just not good at it. At two six five two, I'm gonna butcher this. I'm trying to. What's one parsec? It's like the amount of degrees in one radian. It's the amount of degrees in one radian, but um, but it's that in astronomical units because of how the math works out of calculating a parsec. Ugh, that's it. Two six two six five. Uh, that's how many degrees are in a radian. But that's also um, here here's the cool here's the whole concept, right? Um. It, sorry, arc seconds. Arc seconds, not degrees. That's like 57. The whole concept is if you look at a planet that's very, very far away, um, and uh, if that planet um, is rotating around the sun, or, or a star, and if that planet... Is it time for paint.net again? It's time for paint.net again, isn't it? Yeah, I know inertia, and it's but again, it's something that I want to get better at because it, again, you're just always bombarded with stuff, and it's just it's difficult, man. Okay, so the whole concept here is if you've got um, our hometown right here with star stuff coming out of the star, that's star stuff. Paint.net is failing me. And if you've got the Earth, the whole concept is this. If you see a star all the way out here, and if you have a second planet that's orbiting that star, and if you look at the planet, and if you calculate the distance to this star, and then if you calculate the angle in between that and the furthermost point of um, the planet, I'm, I'm star stuff. Yeah, you bet. Um... Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, so, tell me if I'm wrong here, Horizon Side. Well, it would technically be from our star, I believe. Well, no, it all depends on where you calculate it from. Um, but, let's say that this distance is 1 AU, right here. That's 1 AU. And let's say that this difference in the sky is 1 um, arc second. If you have those two matched up, so if the difference in between the planet and the sun at your perspective is one arc second, and if the planet is orbiting the sun at one AU, then this distance is known as one parks parsec. One parsec. So that's how far away a parsec is. Uh, one parsec is equal to 206, 26, Five and change AU astronomical units so it's 200,000 times the distance from the earth to the sun that's how far away a parsec is I'll tell you what a parsec is really really close that's still nothing when you're looking at galactic distances and it's nothing anyway So this is approaching, obviously, a value that's like 0 0.240 or something. And let's take a look. If we take this value um, equals this to the power of uh, 2 thirds. Oh, what did I do wrong there? Oh, never mind. To the power of 1.5. There you go. So that's that's what um, 
the original period is of Mercury. It's like 0.24 years. All right, but you, you get the concept. You are star stuff, Horizon Sai. You definitely are. And again, here's the whole concept. When you're using A1, A1, oh, why don't you guys correct me on this stuff? Um, A1 has to be less than A2 for this map to work. So Han, yeah, Han Solo did the Kessel Run pretty quickly. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, we, again, the requirement is that A1 has to be less than A2. So if this is A1, we can't use this value as A2 because that means A2 would be less than A1 and we get a negative synodic period. So we can do everything below the black line using this specific formula. So let's take a look at what just happened. Let's go like this. Okay, that's good. Now we can drag them all down and we can drag them all down. So the difference in between Earth and Mars is two years and two months, right? You, you've you heard that before, the difference is two years, two months. Well, that's where it comes from, you can see that now. And then if we drag this further down, um, and then if we drag this over, um, the difference in between Jupiter and Saturn, 19 years in between those two. The difference in between Saturn and Uranus, 45 years. The difference in between Uranus and Neptune, do we have any bets? What's the synodic period between Uranus and Neptune? And I'll be right back. So just give me a second. Thank you. Thank you as always. You guys are too kind. Those are not the rules that we're playing by. We're not playing by the Price is Right rules. <laughs> Let's take a look. I remember it being somewhere out there, 148. Oh! Kelly, you got it with the second guess, 174. So 171.914. It takes 171 years for Uranus and Neptune to realign with each other. Whoa. Whoa. Um, so let's take a look at um, and Uranus and Pluto take 127. Let's take a look at how long it takes for Neptune and Pluto to realign. 492 years. If you consider a human generation to be 35 years, and we did this math the other day with something else. Um, 14 generations of humans until these two planets realign again. Whoa. Pretty wild, right? Anyway, so, and we talked about this the other day as well. Um, well, no, never mind. Yeah, I know, it's sad. Poor Pluto. I know. It takes a long time for Pluto to um, 
to pass Neptune again. It takes a long time for Pluto to really do anything. Pluto's really slow. That's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of baby making. You got that right. So now we can use a similar um, calculation for the above. Now again, what you gotta keep in mind is that everything above is gonna be the same as below. It's just gonna be kind of reversed. So now though, uh, the smallest axis is right here. So let's go like this. This value is gonna be this. And this value is going to be this. And what is going to change is the number, but we can change the the letter. And what's gonna change here is the the row, but we don't want the column to change. We can check our work obviously, and we did it all wrong. So what's the scoop here? What did I do wrong? Oh, no, I did do that wrong. I said it correctly, but I didn't do it right. Two, four, okay, that's lining up properly. So let me just drag all of these out in a similar fashion that we just did for the other one. And then we're gonna do some uh, pretty plots and we're gonna do some data analysis on this because who doesn't wanna do data analysis, right? Data analysis is awesome. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. There's nothing better than getting a, a fresh new big batch of data that you can analyze. Love it. I love it. I love it a lot. I love analyzing things. I love performing a simulation at work and then being like, yes, now I get to analyze all of these numbers. You're giving life, you're giving life and you're giving creation to these nonsensical numbers. You're not changing the data, but you're just presenting it in a different way. And by presenting it in a different way, you're giving it life, you're giving it meaning. Oh, it's wild. It's like reverse entropy. All right, so this is good and dandy. Let's go ahead and go like this. Okay. Fresh baked data pie. Yeah. Design is so much better. I don't know. I don't know about that. No. Just kidding. Design is definitely pretty cool too. All right, we've got our table. Looks pretty fancy. And guys, we're gonna go into um, home and transfers and everything the like real soon, so be prepared. I don't even know if I'm prepared for that. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so anyway, we've got our nice little calculator here. And now we can do some really cool things like um, Sorry, I'm thinking about how I want to do this. Well, first of all, these really aren't part of the table. This is the table, the table of data that we're trying to analyze. All right, so the whole concept is, actually, let's just throw zeros in here and see what happens data-wise. I think we'll be fine if we just throw zeros. I know it's not, te technically it's undefined, but I mean, come on, like, you really gonna call me out on that, or? All right, so let's make a new table, or a new um, insert, uh, one of these bad boys. All right, now let's take a look at some of this data. Let's analyze it. Uh, select data. Let's add um, a series name, so, uh, Mercury series X value so on X what am I doing I don't know if I want to do it this way 
I think what I want to do is just this. Planet, because what I want to do is, um, I want to have a planet that you're looking at versus, um, but it might be even closer to do semi-major axis. What would that signify? Semi-major axis on the X and period on, and synodic period on the Y. You know what, let's just try it. That's the whole point of data analysis. Just try it. No, that's not the whole point of data analysis. There's more to data analysis than that, than just that, so. Okay, so this is kind of the behavior. As you can see, it's, it's again, it's approaching the period of Mercury, which makes sense. So if we add uh, Venus, X values are just going to be the same. And if we look at the Y values, now, see, that's not, that's not the behavior that I want. Now, what if we just, okay, entirely, uh, we can just delete them. Maybe I'll just do that. Can I drag this out? What just happened? All right, so clearly that doesn't look right. Select data. And I, I think it's because, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. All right, let's go like this. Um, uh, X values, I'm instead just going to use these. So everything is nice and linear. Um, Venus, X values are here, uh, Y values are here. I like that a lot more. Mercury, Venus, Earth. Oh, edit X values and then edit Y values. And we should start to see a pattern here. Yeah, so this, this is definitely what I wanted. And I think I know what I'm gonna have to do here. Uh, Earth, uh, Mars. I'm gonna make the Y axis logarithmic. X values. I'm an idiot. I can do that with the X axis too, and that would solve my problem. This is the thing about data analysis. You gotta be cautious. Venus, X values are also these, and then Y values are these. Now let's go ahead and just drag them out. And then we need to set this as a log log. Um, yeah, of course you can. Uh, select data. You guys know how to change axes here to um Can I even use logarithmic? Did that perform a logarithmic on the Y too? No. <laughs> That's really cool. Now the behavior is obviously strange, but look at that. There's almost like a, a line that everything is approaching right in the middle. Yeah, I got it, Kelly. Thank you. I So, I don't understand. If anything, that's a really cool looking plot. <laughs>
Um, so strange. <laughs> that's really neat. Okay, sorry. I, I think that's really neat. Anyway. Hardly difficult. Thank you so much, good sir, and welcome aboard. Thank you for the host, my friend. How's it going today, man? Alright, um... So, it looks kind of strange, but that's, that's okay. I mean, it's... It's something that we'll have to interpret with, um... The appropriate documentation. So we'll add a note on the side as to exactly what this graph represents. That'll help out a little bit. Yeah, thank you, Hardly Difficult. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Guys, Hardly Difficult does, um... Uh, programming that is way above my head. I understand about 1% of the things that he does on stream. But it's cool. If, if you want to actually get better at it, rather than just watching me struggle through it, then definitely check him out. Because he's, uh, he's, he's pretty good at it. He's definitely pretty good at it. Uh, let's add a legend. Oh, uh, it didn't include the names. That's fine. That's fine. We'll go in and we'll change that later. But yeah, guys. Um, he, he's a pretty cool cat or a cool dog. Whatever you prefer, man. But he's, he's a lot of fun to watch. It's really entertaining. It's, it's wild. <laughs> it's wild. Hey, me hi. Me bye. So this is the logarith the logarithm. Um, the log of... Um, Synodic period. Uh, units are the log of years. Okay. Mushuni, welcome aboard, my friend. Oh, and Massacar, welcome aboard, my friend. Okay, so this is the log of the synodic period of the two planets. And this is the log of... Um, log of uh, semi-major axis in um, units of log of uh, astronomical units. Um, corresponding um, synodic periods of planets in our solar system. That might be too long of a title, unfortunately. I, I really don't like expanding my titles too far. So, I believe I have an option to, um... Top? No. Okay, that's not what I want. Is there a way for me to just drag the box on? No. There's not. Ah, Mouse Society, welcome aboard, my friend. There's not a way for me to do that, unfortunately. But that's okay. Um, for those of you guys that are just joining, I'm working with what's called synodic periods. Um, what I'm doing is I'm calculating how long it takes for one planet to entirely pass another planet in successive rotations around the solar system. Uh, well, around the sun. So you can imagine like Earth and Mars, um, there will be a time when Earth, when Earth would officially lap Mars. Uh, but uh, Mars isn't going to be in the same location anymore, so that angle is not exactly 360 degrees. It's going to be slightly more than 360 degrees. So what I'm doing is I'm finding a way to calculate um, all of the times in between all of these different uh, planetary passes. Official tantrum. Welcome aboard. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Um, so for example, you can imagine, uh, let's, and I wish the... I really just need to do this in MATLAB. This is not the right tool for it, and I know that. Shifty Magoo, welcome aboard. Um, so, you, you, can, you can see, so for example, uh, if you're looking at Earth, which has an astronomical unit, which is a, a measurement of how far away you are from the sun in terms of how far away the Earth is from the sun, 
and let's take a look at the synodic period in between Earth and Mars. This means that Earth and Mars will approximately realign with each other every 2.13 years, or about two years and two months. Th that's how long it takes for these two planets to realign with each other. Now again, I'm assuming circular orbits, which definitely isn't totally true, and I'm assuming a few other things. Uh, but if we look down here, you can see that the time of um, the the time it takes for Neptune to successfully realign with Pluto is 492 years, which is kind of ridiculous. And I and I pointed this out to um, people uh, before before the the hardly difficult crew came over. Uh, if you take this value and if you assume uh, somebody's generation, like if you assume a human generation, the amount of time it takes for you to successfully grow up, uh, become an adult and have a child is 35 years, and then you move on to the next um, generation, it's 35 years, uh, then it's 14 generations of humans for these two planets to realign with each other again, okay? What's the project? Don't leave me hanging, man. I want to hear about the project. Uh, so anyway, that's the concept. Um, and then obviously, if you want all of these planets to realign again, <clears throat> well, then you could do the least common, uh, the least common multiple. The length of my, yeah, I did assume, I did assume, uh, which you can do that. So that's another option for you. No, I have not. What is it? I don't even know what that is. Unitus, welcome aboard. Okay, cool. It, it has gone its own way a bit. Cool. Uh, different personalities do different astrology charts. <laughs> Man, GUIs are never easy to create, though. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. That's that's cool, man. Um, that sounds pretty intense for like a side project. So best of luck to you, man. Uh, if that was true, I would not be at liberty to tell you. I don't want to get fired. I can't tell you if it's true or not. <laughs> Elon's the, the PR rep. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we, we've got this really cool looking plot out of it. So format legend. We want this to show on the plot. Let's make this a little bit larger. And I wish that there was a way to just... Oh, well there is. To throw this on the plot instead. Okay. So that's cool. I, I like the way that this is looking so far. I know it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Yeah, I didn't say anything. I don't want to get in trouble. And we'll have to go in and we'll have to fix these series plots later. Uh, let me try to open up OneNote again, and I'm going to see if I can get to work on... Um... Oh, let me check my cell phone. Anyway. B16J03, welcome aboard. And CISA1, welcome aboard. What does that mean? Can you draw a perpendicular line from... Uh, yep, that's exactly what I mean by them realigning. And let me try to open up OneNote and get this to work again. Um, tablet was giving me... My, my tablet was giving me a few issues earlier, but let me see if I can get it up and running. So, hold on a second. Additional setup. Why? This this was uh, our derivation of this prod uh, this problem before. So I, I actually think I can show it to you here. Yeah. So the whole concept is if you've got two planets that are. Is this working now? Okay. It looks like it's working, except for that. Which that's still not working, but whatever. 
I, well, I, I, I took this out to a lot more significant amount of digits as well, and that's the different. So, Mask, welcome aboard, my friend. Uh, so, the whole concept is if you have two planets that are initially aligned, how long will it take for them to realign with each other with respect to the center of the solar system? So, yeah, exactly what you said. If you draw a line going through these planets, then they'll align with the sun. That's what I mean by synodic period. And we went through and derived the math for it, um, which is actually a relatively simple calculation. Uh, and we got 165. See, these, yeah, I, I didn't take this out nearly as far as I should have. And I lost a lot of significant figures because I kept rounding through the, the math. Uh, well, through, through the calculator, because I didn't have a calculator that I liked. So, it, it would make sense. Anyway, let's go and start a new page open, uh, because that, that would make a little bit more sense, I think. So, da, 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 add page. We'll just name this one Transfer Windows. Yep. How would this be useful to know? Say you want to go to Mars. But the only way to get to Mars is uh, by leaving Earth at a specific time that Earth is with respect to the Mars, to, to the Mars. Uh, you can only leave at a specific time where Earth is in a specific orientation with respect to Mars. But let's say that you don't have time to build and plan your entire spacecraft in the next upcoming period. Well, how long is it going to take for the next one? Well, one synodic period's worth. And then you can go and talk to your manager and you can be like, oh, okay, do I have enough time to create this spacecraft and get it up there until the next synodic period or the next rotation of Mars to Earth uh, or Earth to Mars? And if he says no, then you go back and you look at the next synodic period. Synodic periods are incredibly useful, especially when you're planning scientific missions like this to different planets that, that require when you're, when you're performing trajectory optimization that require you to leave at a specific time. Okay? It's it's very, very, very useful. <laughs> Calculate when the most efficient date time to launch is. Yeah, so that's that's a good example. Uh, like, for that, um, we use things called pork chop plots, which are you designate a location that you're starting at, a location that you're ending at, and a time in between those two, and you can calculate the required velocity um, or delta V, or basically how hard it's going to be uh, to go from one location to another. So yeah, bio roots, bio, bio roots. Uh, incredibly useful, man. Incredibly useful. Pork chop, yeah, pork chop plot. Pork chop plot is like this. Um, you've got um, launch date and you've got arrival. And then if you're looking at, so let's say uh, it's Earth to, let's say it's Earth to Mars. Um, then, so if you leave at a specific time, and if you arrive at a specific time, then it'll cost a certain amount of Delta V. But let's say if you leave at the same time, but if you arrive a little bit earlier, then it costs less Delta V. But let's say if you leave a lot later, but arrive at that same time, it costs a lot more Delta V. Now imagine, um, oh, you use them? Oh, okay, then you know what this is, okay? Yes, this is rocket science. Um, you can imagine this entire grid being filled up with Delta V values. That's what a pork chop plot is. So, knowledge. Knowledge is key, everybody. Now, I'm, I'm having a lot of difficulty erasing things. So that's pretty frustrating. Pomelo, welcome aboard. Like, there's clearly something wrong with um, OneNote, but forget about it. I'll go in and try to fix it later. No, these don't account for gravity assists at all. Um, I, gravity assists are very, very complex optimization problem. Because you can hit, like, multiple gravity assists for one mission, and you don't really understand, um, at least intuitively, what the best uh, 
sequence of gravity assist to use. You can't just look at a graph and be like, oh, what sequence of gravity assist should I use? Because approaching the planet at a completely different angle will completely change the amount of delta V or the amount of orbital energy change that you see when you leave the planet after the assist. It completely changes. Delta V change in velocity. So let's say that you are, um, you've got a planet that you're orbiting. Let's say it's just the Earth. Um, and you're orbiting it like this, right? Um, and along your orbit, you've got a specific velocity in this direction, okay? But let's say that you want to get all the way out here, okay? You've got a cold, hard target, like the moon or something. And to get to the moon, um, you can no longer use this velocity. You need to increase your velocity at this point to maybe uh, here. So you want to increase your velocity to this point. And if you increase your velocity to this point, then you're going to be able to get to the moon, okay? So, uh, the amount of delta V required would be this. This is the delta V required to get from this point to this point. Does that make sense? This is kind of simplified, but that's that's what delta V means. So, it's a characteristic of how, how much energy, how much push you got to give the spacecraft. Children of the dead earth. I've never heard of it. That's interesting. So that's what delta V is. Um, makes sense? Okay, good. Um, yeah, so it's it's just how much push you need to give your, your vehicle. It's, that's the simplest way of s describing it. It's just push, right? It's just push. So anyway, um, we're going to look at a problem right now. We're going to go from Earth to Mars. Let's go from Earth to Mars, huh? Let's go from Earth. Um, oh, let me make this a little bit easier for you guys to see here. <sighs> Full page, uh, no rule lines. Okay, so from Earth, uh, from Earth to Mars. Okay, we've got the sun. Looks like that. Uh, we've got the Earth. Combat could be better. Gotcha. Metal face, welcome aboard, my friend. Uh, we've got the Earth which is in some orbit that looks like that. And then we've got Mars all the way out yonder that looks like that. Okay, and we want to go from Earth to... Um, wow, nice circular orbit. Uh, another thing we're assuming, we're assuming circular. And we're also assuming coplanar. Which means that these two orbits lie in the same three-dimensional plane. Now... Um, Let's say that we're going to impart a delta V on the vehicle right here, okay? We're going to impart a delta V on the vehicle right there. And it's going to allow the spacecraft to travel a little bit further out um, than normal to here. And then at this point, we're going to impart another delta V. Um, so, for example, if you wouldn't touch, if you wouldn't create any delta V differences right here, uh, the vehicle would just float back to exactly where you gave the delta V impulse right there. But we're not going to do that. We're going to give another delta V impulse right here, or an impulse burn, I guess you could call it. And then uh, we're going to give it enough power so it stays in the second higher orbit, okay? Now, this two, this two impulse maneuver that we're performing right here is called the Hohmann transfer. Um, it's... You can mathematically prove that this transfer is the most efficient two burn transfer to get from one circular orbit to another one. The most efficient way. Uh, the Holman transfer. Okay, it's it's the most efficient way to do it. Okay. Told me, yes, Tommy would be proud. Exactly. Tommy was an astronomer that basically said, well, God is perfect, so uh, all orbits must be perfectly circular. Right? Because he would never make something that wasn't perfectly circular in, in the solar system. It just wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, right? We're going to need it soon enough. How easy is it to calculate? Oh, it's so super simple. My worksheet one was correct. Yes, it was. So anyway, uh, we're gonna we're gonna calculate a few things to start. Okay, this is gonna be our Earth, uh, the distance to get to Earth, 
Uh, and this is going to be our march. Uh, the semi. Oh, actually, sorry. This is going to be a semi-major axis of Earth. Um, this is going to be the semi-major axis of Mars. Uh, and then if you cut this ellipse in half, um, then this right here would be the semi-major axis of the Hohmann transfer. Okay. So those are a few values that we're going to be using. And if you guys have any questions at all, then just stop me. Okay. Seriously. Have some candy, Kelly. Just stop me if you have any questions. This is a semi-major axis or how far away Mars is rotating from the center of the solar system. And this is how close Earth is rotating, right? So let's go ahead and calculate how much delta V we need to get from Earth to Mars, okay? Uh, Tim Z, welcome aboard, my friend. Uh, and the other thing, right, is if we, so when we get to this point, we want Mars to be here, which means that where, it begs the question, where does Mars need to be around this part of the orbit so that when we leave, Mars will be here when uh, when we get there? Um, that's that's kind of the, the overlying question that we're trying to ask, um, that we're trying to answer. What what Where should Mars be with respect to Earth when we leave? Uh, so that's, that's what we're starting on doing right here. Uh, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to finish everything tonight, but... It's pretty simple okay uh a, a few other things the gravitational parameter but so mu remember mu is equal to the gravitational constant which is just a constant uh multiplied the, by the mass of a body okay that's what the mu parameter is okay is it 40 degrees forward i think it's a little bit different um you started talking about it. Yeah. Uh, now, again, <clears throat> you need to cover the home and transfer before you cover uh, intercepts, but I'll start here. Um, it's because it's a good place to start. And you need to know this stuff if you want to learn how to calculate intercepts. Eventually, what I'm leading up to is what's called the patched conic um, approach to calculating these trajectories. Um, yes, I'm finally using patch conics. We finally made it, everybody. Patch conics. Um, now, again, I'm leading up to patch conics, but this isn't going to be um, patch conics right off the bat. So mu, you guys remember mu from Arrow 101. If you don't remember Arrow 101, then go look at the notes, because I've already taught all this stuff. Okay, so anyway, um, we know a few things, all right? So we know that the velocity of Earth around the sun is equal to the square root of uh, mu over the, mu the gravitational parameter of the sun over the semi-major axis of Earth. We also know that the velocity of Mars is equal to the square root of the gravitational parameter of the Sun divided by the semi-major axis of Mars, okay? Now, we know a few other things, right? We've got this awesome equation uh, called the vis viva, vis viva equation, uh, which is this. The orbital energy is equal to V squared over two minus mu over R, which is also equal to mu over two times your semi-major axis, okay? Now, um, and we, again, guys, if you don't know what I'm doing, either ask, just ask questions and I'll answer the freaking questions. That's kind of the whole point. Um, or go, go read the Error 101 material and it'll cover all this stuff. So, okay. Hey, go get some sleep. Thanks for hanging out. So we, we, and we need to find out, um, Here's the whole concept, right? So Earth has a velocity, which we just happen to have because we're orbiting around the Earth, but it's not exactly like that. Welcome aboard, my friend. Um, and then we need a larger velocity to get into this more intense orbit, uh, and we're trying to calculate the change in velocity. Makes sense. And then when we get up here, um, kind of the same thing. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to clutter the page, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, well, I, I YouTube some of the original lessons. Yeah, I don't YouTube them too often now. Oh, wait, what? I Sorry, that's not in the right format. I didn't know that I get YouTube subscription notifications when... I don't know. But to be honest, man, I, I really don't use YouTube too often. I just use it for documentation. <clears throat> like, I don't edit or 
I don't take care of the videos or anything. They're just there. So anyway, we know um, v squared over 2 minus mu over r is equal to mu over 2a. Okay? Now, um, we know that uh, delta v1, the first velocity impulse, is going to be velocity of the Hohmann transfer at periapsis minus the velocity of the Earth. That's what this is going to be. This is uh, velocity of the Hohmann transfer at periapsis, and this is the velocity of the Earth, okay? Those are the two things we're solving. Uh, so it's equal to this. So the velocity at um, the Hohmann transfer at periapsis, and thanks for the YouTube subscriptions. I didn't even know that I got notifications on that, so sorry for it being the default Streamlabs crap. I, I hate that. I hate how they make the letters all whatever. You get it. Um, so anyway, we can go like this. Uh, we know v squared over 2 minus mu over r is equal to mu over 2a. We also know that the Hohmann transfer semi-major axis is equal to uh, the semi-major axis of the Earth plus the semi-major axis of Mars divided by 2. Where do we get that from? Uh, we get that from right here. Uh, if you add the semi-major axis of Earth and the semi-major axis of Mars and divide it by two, then we get half of this ellipse, and that's the Hohmann transfer, okay? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, it definitely does, but again, Patch Connick's approaches are, you, you can guarantee an answer within like 5 to 10% of what you're actually going to see. Well, the, the whole concept is, once you've, <laughs> once you've going past the sphere of influence of a body, then um, you don't really feel the gravitational effects of that body too much anymore. It doesn't really affect your orbit as a little. But yes, it, it definitely affects, um, it, it affects your trajectory. It absolutely does. But honestly, what KSP has is awesome, what they're doing. What, it's absolutely awesome. It's just not accurate, too accurate. But it, the, KSP uses the patch conic approach. And it works. So... I mean, hats off to them. All right, so we've got, again, Hohmann transfer uh, is Earth plus Mars. So anyway, we also know that uh, we're calculating uh, velocity Hohmann transfer of periapsis, which means that your radius at this point is just a semi-major axis of the Earth, okay? Um, so let's simplify this a little bit. So V um, H P. This velocity of the home peri of the home transfer at periapsis is equal to the square root of uh, mu over two times the semi-major axis of the home transfer plus mu over uh, the semi-major axis of the Earth multiplied by two. Okay, so now we have that, and then we can actually throw this into the equation. Okay. Uh, well, obviously, it's a lot more complicated because it's it's like a multifaceted optimization problem that includes a lot of different parameters it's not as simple as just patch conics but um yeah i mean ksp does it all right <laughs> so delta v1 uh v1 is then equal to the square root of two multiplied by um and we're actually gonna um substitute this ah into here uh mu over and the two will cancel um a earth plus a mars plus mu over a earth minus the square root of mu over a earth okay so now we know delta v1 look at that um yes we know delta v1 yeah i know it's a game i get it so we we know Delta V1 now, okay? Uh, and let's calculate Delta V2. Um, now, Delta V2 is actually a very similar um, format. Uh, what we would want, Delta V2 is equal to... Now, the larger velocity this time is uh, your circular velocity, which is just square root of mu over semi-major axis of Mars, minus the square root... But realism all overhaul doesn't fix patch conics. You need Principia for that. Principia uses M-body physics. Yeah, the Joule system would be totally unstable. Yep. That's the, that's the other thing. You you introduce Lagrangian points once you start doing n-body, and that makes everything a lot more complicated, too. Minus 2 multiplied by, again, uh, mu over a earth 
plus a Mars. Um, plus, and this time it's mu over a Mars. Uh, I'm not going to rederive it because the derivation is very similar for this delta V2. And then delta V is obviously equal to just delta V1 plus delta V2. Okay. And that's how we calculate this whole velocity required for, um, for home and transfer. So we're going to actually take a look at this and we're going to see what it needs for Earth and Mars. Okay. Oh, where... Uh, mu is equal to mu of the sun. So let's see how much it would cost delta V wise to go from Earth to Mars. Approximately. It, and it's not it's not exact. Dang it. Oh, Kelly, I don't know actually. That's a good question. And I've I have not used Principia, so I really couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you in the end. Okay. So now we're gonna figure out exactly um and guys just give me one second here. Uh we're gonna figure out exactly what these delta V values are. Um that's kind of the whole that's the plan, right? So let's do that. Um All right, so let's figure out what these values are um, in eight months. Holy crap. You gotta, you gotta get to playing, man. It's taking you so long. Let's zoom out a little bit. So we have our equations over here. Okay, so let's make uh, a new page. Some kind of workaround, oh, okay. So we know that, um, it's not gonna allow me to do this, unfortunately. That's okay. Um, we know that uh, the mu of the sun, and let me pull up, um, yeah. yeah, good luck finding it in that mess. Uh, let me pull up this. Uh, the gravitational parameter of the sun is uh, 1.327124 times 10 to the 11th. Um, the semi-major axis of Earth is equal to, um, semi-major axis of Earth is, uh, 149, uh, 598.023 kilometers. Oh, I don't want kilometers because I'm going to be able to use that value. Uh, kilometers. This is, uh, kilometers uh, cubed per seconds squared. I think that's the, uh, yes. Uh, and then the semi-major axis of Mars is equal to, um, 227, um, 939. Okay. 227-939-186. Uh, and these are both numbers. Okay, and this is also kilometers. So we know that the semi-major axis of the Hohmann transfer is then equal to, um, equals just this value plus this value divided by two. Okay, uh, we also know that the velocity of Earth is equal to the square root of the gravitational parameter of the sun divided by the semi-major axis of Earth. About 29 kilometers per second. All right, so every second, Earth moves about 30 kilometers around the sun. That's how fast the Earth is moving around the sun. Um, now, uh, let's take a look at the velocity of Mars is equal to approximately the square root of um, gravitational parameter of the sun divided by semi-major axis of Mars. Mars is rotating around 24 kilometers per second, okay? Um, now let's calculate, um, and actually this is horribly unorganized, so I apologize. All right, so we now know these two. So let's calculate the velocity uh, of the Hohmann transfer at uh, periapsis, or at the closest point, okay? Welcome aboard, Frankie the Kid. Um, 
which is going to be this funky equation that we had come up with right here, right? So this is the equation. Uh, equals the square root of two times um, the gravitational parameter of the sun divided by um, the semi-major axes of Earth and Mars uh, plus the gravitational parameter of the sun divided by the semi-major axis of Earth. That doesn't seem right. Let me try something here. Let me try doing the same thing, uh, but with the changes. So it's two times uh, the gravitational parameter of the sun divided by Earth plus, um, okay, plus Mars divided by mu sun over um, Mars. Okay, that's definitely wrong. So we did something wrong with our calculation here with our derivation. Um, that's okay. We'll look into it. Crap, what did I do? Uh, this value should be less. Okay, what what the heck am I doing? All right, let's go back and let's take a look at this. I don't know what just happened. Uh, it's fine, it's really not a problem. Uh, anyway, uh, velocity of the Earth is square root mu over a Earth. Velocity of Mars is square root mu over a Mars. V vivas, V squared over two minus mu over same major axis equal to mu over two a. Okay, now um, that's definitely right. So this uh, V squared over two minus mu over r, which is in just this case this, is equal to. Ugh, I'm a fool. It's the wrong equation. It's the wrong equation. You need a big fat negative in there, <laughs> or like the tiniest negative I can come up with. It's a negative. <sighs> come on. What a fool. Come on, allow me to draw, okay? Hey, programming guru, what's up? <laughs> Got him. Whatever, Novus. What's a programming guru? Oh, come on. I, I've lost the pen again. I swear, something is funky with... Um, what's up, guru? Uh, negative mu over 2a is the correct equation. So this is actually negative right here. Sorry, I fooled all of you, okay? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, this is a negative as well. Crap. We got the streamer? Yeah, you guys got me. You guys got me. Unfortunately, negative, and then this is also negative, okay? The famed programming guru. She's back in her alter ego. <laughs> or I guess this is your main ego, and then AYE is your alter ego. Got him! Yeah, you guys got me. You got me. Or maybe I got you. No, I'll admit it. You guys got me here. You guys got me. That's a negative, not a positive. So let's go back to our Excel document. Oh... Jesus. So anyway, um, this is actually equal to negative all of this nonsense. There we go. That's a little bit more reasonable. That's a bit more reasonable right there. All right. So uh, next step is um, more calculations. So uh, let's take a look at delta V1, okay? They're both, they're both the right account. Uh, delta V1, the, the amount of delta V you need for the first burn, okay? Delta V1 is going to be equal to velocity of the Earth, or velocity of, at periapsis minus velocity of the Earth, 2.94 kilometers per second. And then the second burn is going to be um, 2.64 kilometers per second, okay? So... Those are the amounts that you need, okay? So anyway, uh, 
there's there's a really cool thing that you can do here. Uh, so, guys, let's build a spacecraft. Um, and let's see if we can get to Mars uh, using this impulsive maneuver. Um, we're going to assume a few things. We're, assume, we're assuming we're going to use... Um, let's build. Uh, let's build a... Uh, so, custom spacecraft. Let's see if we can get to Mars in one clean swoop. How about it? You guys want to get to Mars? I want to get to Mars. Um, custom spacecraft. <laughs> no, no, no. I have been eating the pizza. I told you. When, when you guys see me leave, it's so I can go over and grab a bite of pizza. I have been eating pizza. Don't worry. I've been eating pizza. Trust me. <laughs> I was eating the pizza. So let's build a custom spacecraft. Guys, how much do you want the spacecraft to, uh, not to weigh? How much mass should we put on the spacecraft? You guys, let me know. How much pizza, wait, no, stop. How much mass should, and how much pizza should we put on the spacecraft? I don't know. How much mass should we put on the spacecraft? Seriously, just name name some value for mass in kilograms. Uh, and that's, that's, how much do you want your spacecraft to weigh? All fuel and everything. How much do you want it to weigh? And I'll be right back. I'm going to grab a bite of pizza. But guys, just literally, just put a mass value in there and we'll do some cool things with it. Oh, I'm going to do this. You guys have very interesting units. <laughs> okay, well, doesn't matter. We'll make do. Um, Kerbal spreadsheet. This is not Kerbal. This is real life, man. <laughs> this is real life. This is not Kerbal. Well, <laughs> guess I said in kilograms, but let's let's pick a decent value here. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. <laughs> One side of bin. No, side of bin. Excuse me. <laughs> One side of bin. No, come on. <laughs> guys, I'm gonna do, um, jeez, you guys are so difficult sometimes, okay, <laughs> you wanna do 72.8, um, how much it should weigh, <laughs> teach me, <laughs> well, I'll show you, okay, uh, so, let's start with, um, your weight, and let's say that you're, I would say you have the ability to um, turn your mass into thrust and energy. Um, and let's say that you can do that at the same rate as an RS-25 engine. Okay, so we're going to assume that you have the ability to do that with an RS-25 engine. Uh, so let's assume an RS-25 that has a significant impulse of uh, 450 seconds around there.
Well, not really. I mean, these intercepts typically have, like, week-long windows. Um, and no burn is going to be more than, like, 5 to 10 minutes at max. For, for most things in the solar system, you're not going to have a chemical burn that lasts longer than 5 to 10 minutes. So anyway, so let's start with you. Let's see that you can expel mass similar to an RS-25 engine with that specific impulse. Specific impulse is just a characterization of how efficient your engine is. Doesn't matter. Um, let's start with the mass um, of 72.8 kilograms. 72.8 kilograms, okay? Now, uh, we're gonna use um, first burn, okay? So first, we're gonna use what's called the rocket equation. Now the first burn is gonna be this. So uh, your mass after performing this burn is gonna be as follows, okay? Equals, oh, sorry. Yeah, kilograms. Gotta put your units on, guys. Need your units. Okay. That's not smoke alarm, that's my coffee pot. <laughs> yeah, Anderson, no problem, man. So, um... Oh, Carbonaut, no, jeez, dude. <laughs> Uh, so, your mass after the first burn, okay? Let's say that this is the amount of delta V you need. And again, we just explained what delta V is. It's just change in velocity. You've got a certain velocity, but to get to another planet, you need a lot more velocity. So the change in that velocity is what you need. So to get on this first arc here, um, to get on this first arc here while you're going to the planet is going to be the first burn. So let's see uh, what you weigh after this first burn. It's going to be equal to, using the rocket equation, your first mass times uh, exponent of negative your delta V value, which is um, just this. Uh, we need to convert that to meters per second, divided by a G0, which is just 9.81 meters per second squared, times ISP, 450 seconds. All right, so if you can burn like an RS-25, you are already down to 37 kilograms. Let's take a look at our second mass after the second burn, okay? Uh, very similar concept. Um, so we're just going to copy this, and this is not going to be right when I first copy it. <laughs> Your mass is going to be false. Wrong! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so let's fix this up. Uh, it's going to be your initial mass, starting at the burn, multiplied by uh, C16, which is, again, your second burn, or your second delta V value, multiplied by your ISP. At the end of this, um, you will be 20 kilograms, okay? That's not a lot. Now let's do something wild, okay? Let's do something like this. Um, let's see how much. Um, uh, I want to go like this. Actually, I want that open. So let's say um, Apollo uh, service uh, module mass. All right, actually, you know what? Um, So, huh? Yeah. So, EUS can hold. Uh, it's it. The vehicle itself is 130 metric tons, because that's what the Block Two should be able to take up. But it's probably not going to. Okay. But anyway, yeah. If mass is false, you've got a lot of issues. So let's take a look at this then. Let's say you start with 130 kilograms. If we have an upper stage that's 130 metric tons, not 130 kilograms, 130 metric tons. Yeah, Novus, you know it. Um, 130, uh, one, one, three, zero, 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 zero kilograms. Then we can send something to Mars that is 36 metric tons, okay? Let's take a look at a few things. Uh, let's look at uh, the Apollo. Uh, command module mass. Uh, the Apollo command module mass 
which again, the command is just this. The, the command module is the top part of this. The service module is the back of it. Um, can you just give me the command module maybe? That would be nice. Crap. There we go. So, the, uh, the command module right here, okay, weighs uh, 5,000 kilograms or five metric tons, okay? Which means that we can send uh, six command modules. Um, and again, Apollo command module. Ouch, I just poked myself in the eye. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you'd be able to send about six and a half command modules there. Guys, what's the mass of something that you know and love? Let's say that your payload is strictly uh, uh, bananas. Okay, keep the chatter down in this room. Uh, on average, uh, um, <laughs> what? Uh, about 0 0.647 kilograms uh, equals this divided by uh, 0 0.647. Uh, you can send a payload of five, whoa, wow, 56,000 bananas to Mars if you're using the SLS in the EUS, okay? Nope, doesn't count. Getting off Earth is a whole lot more than this. Getting off Earth is very tough, okay? And that's where the hard bit is, yeah, absolutely. Drinking the payload during the mission? Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, so, um, what other masses should we try? Let's say that we're using, um, the BFR, okay? Uh, BFR mass. So, da da da. So, payload to low Earth orbit, uh, we can send 250 metric tons. 250,000 Oh, wait. Well, so this is expendable. So this means uh, that basically BFR is not being used in a reusable format, that we're just getting rid of BFR. And that's 250,000 kilograms. 250,000 kilograms. Then we can send 70 metric tons, 70 freaking metric tons uh, to, uh, to Mars, okay? Let's see how much a house weighs <laughs> or a car. Um, standard uh, SUV mass. Car mass. I don't know. Uh, so let's assume that it's a huge SUV, about two metric tons. Oh, we can send 35 huge SUVs in one trip to Mars. Okay? That's a lot. Okay? We could send many AYEs. Yes, we could. Um, now, here's the other thing, though, okay? Let's say you wanted to send a human. Well, the human mass is not the issue with these trips, right? The, the, the problem is... Um, the problem is uh, you got to send a lot of food and water along the way, and that's where all the weight comes into play with human-rated missions, okay? Uh, anyway. So... We calculated Earth to Mars, we calculated the two Delta V's required to do that once you get into LEO. And these these aren't really exactly true. It, it's actually going to be a little bit more than this for a few reasons, uh, which maybe I'll go over next time. And this is the final mass, alright, that you can send using these values, okay? Let's say that for some reason you've got like a really efficient engine that has a lot of a heavy ISP value. Then you'll be able to boost that up. Now let's look up um, RL10s, okay? Uh, RL10. RL10s are a little less efficient, I believe. <laughs> Careful, Kelly. We gotta play. We we gotta play nice, man. True side. True. The RL tens. Um, ha oh, never mind. Did I just use the RL ten values? Originally, I think I did. All right. So ISP of the RS twenty five. Oh, they're both about four hundred fifty seconds in vacuum space. 
So let's just keep using those. So anyway, yeah, so that's how you use these equations. It's pretty cool. Um, so basically, here's the thing. Uh, you, you, and if you use up every single ounce of fuel when you get there using this much, uh, then you can send 70 metric tons to Mars of just dry, usable payload, which is a lot of mass. Again, it's like 35 made huge SUVs, okay? It's a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight. Um, and to give you an idea, when you leave Earth, it's about 11 kilometers per second to get from the ground. Wait, is it 11 kilometers per second? I forget. It's a lot. You need a lot to burst through the atmosphere. There's so much drag that just, well, it drags it down. And it takes a lot of energy to get up there. But um, let's go like this, kilograms and kilograms. It takes a lot of energy to get up there. Anyway, so that's that. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, isn't the idea to send all that stuff ahead of time? And the idea, right, the idea is to send a few missions beforehand. So then once we send humans, everything's already there. So we don't have to already send it all at once, right? That's kind of the idea behind it. Um, but guys, you're not going to see anybody go to Mars for quite a while. I know that Elon is being very optimistic with saying that we'll get there by like 2022. I, I had somebody in here this morning that said, oh, yep. Man mission to Mars starting in 2020. I'm like, dude, no, sorry. <laughs> and I'm not even just saying it because of Elon. I'm saying NASA can't do it either, okay? It's going to be a while until we see a manned mission to Mars. Like, a very long time. Um, but with that being said, that means that we only have to work that much harder to get there that much quicker, okay? But it's, it's going to be a while until we send man missions to Mars. The moon is definitely a lot easier, okay? It's a lot easier. And that's that's all I'm, that's all I'm gonna say about the manor. Uh, let me see if anybody else from Twitch EDU is streaming. Well, that's the other thing, servant. He's a private company, which means that he's all about making money. So he kind of likes uh, fudging the truth a little bit to get a little bit extra money sometimes, and I I understand that. That's fine. Um, and why do you think NASA gets so much hate all the time? They're a public company, so we're brutally honest about our predictions. Um, Elon is very optimistic, and I, I love everything Elon is doing. I love it so much. Just take what he says with a grain of salt, okay? Take what NASA says with a grain of salt. Always be analyzing things. Don't just listen to people. Analyze things, okay? <sighs> anyway, I, I need to go do things like work out and get healthy so i'm gonna go for a run or something i will talk to you guys later thanks so much for hanging out i hope you had a lot of fun now that you guys know all about this awesome new material um uh and you know what again as soon as the sky clears up we're gonna do a telescope stream okay yeah serpent i saw that man i saw that um i, I might just throw ej on or something but you you guys are um you guys are going to see a telescope stream coming up soon. It's going to be a lot of fun, okay? So, guys, thanks for hanging out. Um, makes sense, I know. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I will talk to all of you guys later, and thank you so much for all the support. All right, see you later, guys.